All right, so we got everything ready to get the engine dropped in. Um, let's, uh, we got the mount replaced and we dented in the side there. We got this mount on there and tight Healy coil. We got our alternator back on and let's uh, lift this up and slide it under and try to get it in. All right, my jack won't lift high enough, so I need to get a block of wood and wedge it in there. Hopefully that'll help. All right, that went pretty smooth. That lines up right there. This one's gonna line up and there's gonna be plenty of room for the pulley. Let's uh, get the engine hoist over here, raise the engine up and we can get the engine in place. All right, after uh, struggling quite a bit, I mean, there's just, I just struggle getting the engine in. I mean, there's no question about it. Just getting the engine in and out, I struggle. I bent this thing all up because coming from the bottom, it's like tapered. So I had to bend it out to get it up in because it kept pushing on the rubber on both sides. And so, that wasn't a great idea. And then the wood blocks that I stuck down in there, they were caught on the exhaust, the header. 
And so it was making the engine lean back. Man, I just struggle. But we got it in there. We just need to bolt it down and she's in. So uh, let's get this bolt, that one over there. And then we have to get the T bracket in place, which I feel like I'm gonna struggle with that. But I think I'm gonna start with the T bracket first. That way I can move the engine around. It is starting to sprinkle and it's supposed to rain for the rest of the night. Um, the alternator pulley has plenty of room. I mean, that worked perfect. That was perfect. I think I took, pushed in way too much, but I didn't know and I didn't want to have to do it twice. But yeah, I, I struggled. All right, so we got the engine in, but um, I'm struggling with the, uh, the mounts. Um, getting the holes to line up here and I got the T-bracket in there and they don't quite line up as well and another thing I'm trying to put the uh the factory traction bar in but this mount here is different on the b series obviously the b series is a little bit longer of a block so i think i'm gonna have to cut this thing off because i can't raise it up without it hitting the transmission it looks like there would be a mount here in the front, but this is probably the wrong um, traction bar for it to fit just because this would be in a 92 through 95 Civic, the, or a Del Sol, I guess. So we are going to take this back down and cut this off. All right, we got all the mounts connect it that one I still need to tighten that one down but it's in there we got this one we got the T bracket um, next one I do is get the axles in on both sides and swap out the um, the shift linkage but everything's coming along I'm pretty happy with the progress all right so the final thing in this video is we're going to swap out the shift linkage there are basically two screws that will screw into here that we need to get up there and then screw this one in and then we can get those ends up on the transmission. In order to do that, the first thing you need to do is remove the shift knob, which I've already done. The boot and everything can stay. You don't have to remove it because it should slide straight through. All right, we got the uh, shift linkage in there. We don't have the bitch pin in yet, but we're gonna do the inside first and then we'll get the rest of it up underneath. It was uh, pretty simple, other than all the shit falling down on my face. And uh, the two screws were pretty rusty, so I swapped them out with a, a different one. And um, we should be good to go. And you want to make sure you get this rubber boot fully seated all the way around. That way it doesn't come off, because if you have an exhaust leak, that exhaust gas is going to come through here. All right, now on to the little boot. All right, we got the boot in, and technically it should bolt to the bottom of this, but um, I'm pretty sure all the the connectors or snaps or whatever are rusted because this whole piece that surrounds the boot or the, the fabric was pretty rusty, and this is how it was, so I'm just going to put it back how it was. All right, now let's get underneath and get the bitch pin. All right, this thing right here is what's referred to as the bitch pin. You have to squeeze it with like a pair of vice grips and it should slide into the hole. But this thing is like a torture device. I don't know why Honda ever used these things. So for ease, I'm going to just use a bolt 
Um, you know, this would make things so much easier for when you want to replace bushings or, you know, any maintenance with the shift linkage. So we're going to use this instead of that. All right, we have our bolt in where our bitch pin goes. Um, of course, I Loctited it and I'm going to pull the rubber thing around it and then put a zip tie on it. That way it keeps it from sliding up. And then if this ever does fall out, the rubber is gonna hold it from falling completely out. That's that, and that's serviceable now, or easily serviceable. And then we have this one uh, bolted to the transmission, and that's the shift linkage. The difference between the B series and the D series shift linkage, you have to extend it just a little bit right here or wherever, but on both bars, they've been extended. You can buy aftermarket ones that are already extended, but I feel like it's easier to just do it yourself and it's cheaper. But you know me, I'm all about the budget. All right, at this point, we are at the last 10%. We uh, just need to button up the final things. Uh, we do need to get the, uh, the tack cable put in and the new um, throttle cable because this one's way too long and so we'll take care of that and then of course the radiator all the heater hoses the fuel filter and then the air box and of course you know the wiring but the wiring will be a whole separate video and with that being said this will be the end of this video um we got the engine in we got all the mounts lined up and bolted down uh the shift leakage the axles um yeah we got a lot done in this video the only thing left really is the wiring and the last 10 percent but the last 10 percent if you've ever built a car is always the small details that always takes a long time so it might be another day or two before i actually get this done but hopefully we'll have it done by the end of the week it is supposed to rain a couple days this week but but when it's raining we'll switch up and get back working on the 88 wagon because it's under the carport and we can take care of the wiring on that and get that done and start it and get it out of here but on the next video we're going to do the wiring I'm not really re gonna record any of the, the small details, the radiator and all that stuff, uh, the last 10%. So, and please hit that uh, like button, please subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, then please join the uh, Mr. JDM Facebook group. I will answer your questions there. I will not answer technical questions in the comment section of this video. So, Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.